first and foremost, um, we start with David De Gea. Um, we start with David De Gea. Um, while I accept that Harry Maguire is probably the reason, is probably at fault for that goal, David De Gea, you know, David De Gea here, he should save that. And what's so frustrating for me, what's so frustrating about this whole um, ordeal is that um, he's made mistakes like this in the past that have cost us games. Okay? If people remember the, the just before the season, the Everton game where we drew 1-1 and we played similarly to a tweet we played against Everton where I don't know what he's doing, kicks it, makes it, well, I don't know what he's doing and we concede and, he put, and we're put under pressure. You know, um, it's not good enough. Um, and, you know, I get that people have been out for three months. I'm going to talk about that because on reflection, on, on sleeping on the whole thing, the reality is that all these players have been playing for three months. They're probably a bit rusty. I don't think you can completely blame um, this squad for, for how they performed, etc. You know, so I think that we need to we need to we need to be reasonable. However, the issue with David Hare is that these these have been, you know, world class keepers save that. Good keepers save that. Poor keepers don't save that. You know, Dean Henderson saves that. You know, Ben Foster saves that. Peter Smichael saves that. David De Gea should really be sa saving that. Um, and um, and it's 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 frustrating. It it it, it is frustrating. Um, uh, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Going to be coming back to what what you guys think about players. But for me, David De Gea gets a four. No, <laughs> five. He gets he gets a five because he he was partly responsible. Sorry, guys. Uh, ah, that's better. Um, he gets a five because he was he helped us actually. Um, yeah, that's better. Sorry, guys. He gets a five because he made a good save against Son. Um, and if that goes in, it's pretty much game over because you know Mourinho is going to park the bus. But he keeps on putting us under necessary pressure, and I think that questions. I think he's had the position for so long. And have no competition, and I think that you need to start giving the likes of Romero and possibly Henderson a shout. So David De Gea gets a five for me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, Raymond Moore says, um, "What's your thought on Roy Keane's comments to Maguire and De Gea? He's absolutely angry. Roy Keane was mad. Roy Keane, <laughs> Roy Keane was pissed, and, and for good reason because it's basic. And I think the thing is that, like, if this was not, if this was an isolated incident." Then you could say, ah, okay, 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 fine. You know, it's the fact that this has happened several times this season, though. And it's cost us points. I would argue we've, we've lost nine between 9 to 12 points this season because of a David De Gea error. Let's say 9 to give it to the best. We, we have. We have. Everton, both times, I feel like De Gea should be stronger in that corner, although I still think he was fouled. But in the first one, he, he, he where is he? What's he doing? Made the mistake, I think, against was it Burnley or West Ham? You know, it, it's 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 not good enough. It's not good enough. But anyway, let me let me let me move on. Let me move on. But yeah, but Roy Keane, what Roy Keane said was um was angry, um, but he's but he's he's not wrong. De Gea should be doing better, in my opinion. Um, let's quickly move on. I will be getting to your comments, guys. I just want to get through these player ratings quick. So we've got a lot to talk about. Victor Lindelof. Um, Lindelof, um, he, <sighs> I'll give Lindelof a six um, for the simple fact that I don't think Lindelof did anything wrong per se, but but this is the big thing with this team is that um, we need a pacey centre-back. Now, for everyone who's saying, and I think Dan, I think Sanna said that we need a centre-back, we need to keep all these things. The fact is, we've just spent 80 million on Harry Maguire, so we're not going to be buying another centre-back. We're not. So we need to look at what centre-backs we have. And right now, we have Bay, Twansibi and Phil Jones as backup. Twansibi and Bay, sorry, Twansibi and um, Jones are injured. And so we just have Bay as backup. Now, the reality is, is that we, we need a pacey centre-back to play either alongside a Lindelof or alongside a, um, alongside a, um, a Harry Maguire. That's what we need. That's what we need. It's as simple as that. That, that is what we need. 
Um, and if Bay is playing alongside Maguire in that game, or alongside Lindelof in that game, we don't concede that goal. We might concede the penalty, possibly, but we don't concede the goal. We don't concede... When you see Bay playing, and this is... The, and again, and I'll come to Guan next because, because he's going to get a lower score. Um, when you see Bay playing, we don't, we don't get bossed by long balls up the top because that's essentially what happened. It happened, it happened against, I think, West Ham and Burnley and Bournemouth, and it happened against um, Crystal Palace as well. You know, this sort of just defend deep, long ball up the top, um, gets out um, Lindelof and, and Harry Maguire every single time because they don't have the pace, let alone coming back from three months, you know? So, but Maguire, outside that, didn't think really do anything wrong. I think he gets a six for me. Um, this guy, on the other hand, who's our supposed captain, um, he, he gets he gets four and a half. Um, he gets a four. He gets a four and a half to me. He gets a four and a half to me um, because he really should not be being being done by Bergwijn there. He should be either getting close or not let him get past him. Um, and Harry Maguire really, 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 um, you know, needs. He needs to step up a bit. I mean, it's difficult because of his high price tag, but and of course he's not been playing for three months. But for me, um, this is a player who costs 80 million and is not playing like an 80 million centre back. Yes, United arguably were foolish to spend that amount of money. I, I, I would agree with that. But he needs to do better. And that goal is in part his fault. He needs to do better there. He, he needs to. So he gets a four and a half for me. Um, I, I don't think I'll get give him as low as De Gea. I'm only just throwing at De Gea just simply because... It's, he, he should save that, and it's just, and while I don't think it's solely his fault, um, at the same time, he's he's been there before. He's been there before. Just a few uh, quick questions, sit, comments here. Um, De Gea, yeah, De Gea costs more points than he give. That is true. And Raymond Moore says De Gea costs us so many games with his blunders. Agreed. Um, Oblak in Manchester United now. I don't even think he needs to get Oblak. You know, these, these, you know, we don't need a world class keeper. We just need a good keeper. Like, like I said, Dean Henderson, Romero, they make those saves. You know, it's not, it does, it's not for a world class keeper. They, they get, they, they, those saves are made by good keepers. But for some reason, De Gea can't make them. Um, this morning was way better than Maguire. Ah! I'm not sure. I think it's just the fact that it, Maguire's price tag. Um, but I think the big thing, as I've said, is that um, you can't play two centre-backs with no pace together. They're going to be outdone. And that's basically what happened in this game. Um, quickly moving on. Oops, sorry, back. Wambasaka. Wambasaka, I'll give a six. Um I don't think he had that great of a game. His crossing obviously wasn't particularly great. We've known that for a while, but um, you know, he he just he just seemed a bit, he, a bit un, uh, I won't say unfit, but not lacking sharpness. And that was the sum of this whole team: is that we didn't play badly, but it was clear that we lacked match fitness. And that's the sort of annoying thing about this game: is that before lockdown, had we played this game against Spurs, we would have gone into this game. And we would have battered Spurs because Spurs had injuries and Spurs, and we looked fit going into this game. We had players who were at it. Um, now Spurs get their players back. It's been a long layout, and um, everyone just doesn't look particularly sharp, you know. So, um, in, incidental, incidental thing though for those who are saying that Kane and and Son were going to just sort of boss um, boss Manchester United. They were invisible. Aside from Kane's chance in the first half, he was invisible. And aside and Harry Kane, I didn't even know he was playing. You know, sit down all those Marshall haters. Um, so yeah, Wambasaki for me is six because even though in attack he was terrible, the reality is that they weren't coming down his side that much unless they doubled up on him. They weren't. It was it was um the left side that we were getting the problems. And speaking of left side, Shaw, the thing is, I'll give Shaw a six as well, but for different reasons. Um, I give Shaw a six for the simple reason that um, that um, in the first half, he was trash. 
He was, in my opinion, he was trash. He was, he, he just wasn't fit. He didn't, he didn't look slow. He just was, he was just all over, the, all over the show. He just did not look good at all in the first half. Um, but in the second half, he made two very, very important interceptions. Very, very key interceptions that he made in that first, in that first half. And, you know, does, does Brandon Williams do that? I'm not 100% sure. So the thing with Shaw, like Williams, is that, like a lot of these players that they suffered yesterday, it's just match fitness, it's match sharpness. I don't think you can completely judge this team based on yesterday's performance. At the end of the day, we didn't lose. So I'm still content having slept on it. Um, but, you know, I don't think he was the worst player on the field. Um, and he did save us twice in the second half and he did improve. So Shaw sure gets a six for me. Um, I need to speak up because I've got, still got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. By all means, make, make sure that you like the vid, 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 share and subscribe, comment. It doesn't take that much. Please give it a like and consider becoming a member. Um, Scott McTominay and Fred, who I'll come on to later, had really, really poor games. Um, McTominay remind, and Fred, but certainly McTominay reminded me of when we played against Newcastle. Didn't really have any ideas. I didn't know, really know what McTominay was doing, really. Was he protecting the back four? Was he trying to, you know, I don't know what McTominay was doing. We played, we seemed to play 4-2-3-1, I think, with Fred McTominay holding against a low block side, which we've known throughout this entire season does not work. I don't know why Ali insists in playing 4-2-3-1 against low block slides. And it didn't work. We were all saying from 4 2 3 1 to 4 4 2. And I just I just didn't see what McTominay brought today, to be honest. I think Fred was marginally better. And I was surprised when McTominay came off because aside from effort, what did McTominay really do? You know, the passing from him was was uh, uh, to create things was dreadful. There was no our midfield, there was there was it was on balance, there was nothing, you know. So, you know, if we're playing against low box slides, I'm not saying against like a Manchester City or something where you could hit them and sort of that's fine. But against low block teams, you're just going to park the bus. So you can't play, you can't play McTominay and Fred together. You know, so I'm going to give McTominay. Um, uh, a four and a half as well. I think these are harsh, but 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 but, but, but there we are. Um, just reading against me in comments. I think De Gea's head is in Spain. I don't know where his head is because he's not going to get to Real Madrid. Courtois there. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, Wamba Saka's terrible on attack. Like I said, you know, he, it's it's people aren't sharp, so and he'll he'll change with that. We've known that for a while, but but defenders defensively, he's fine, you know. So what more can you what can you ask for? I'm sure he's better defense, but he is a better offensive player than Wamba Saka. I agree. Um, I definitely agree with that. But the goal does come down his side. It's the thing. So you know, on the one hand, yes, that's why we need a right winger because what a lot of people don't get understand is that like. Wambasaka has got Daniel James in front of him. Who, you know, what is Daniel James going to do? He has plays gets Lingard in front of him, so it's a lot harder for Wambasaka on the right side than it is for Luke Shaw on the left side, who has like either Rash Rashford or Martial, who are good at coming back. Well, certainly Rashford is, and are good at playing off the left. You know, so we're relying on Wambasaka to do things as almost like a right winger when we should be really relying on an actual right wing wing player. You know, in my opinion. And Raymond midfield is a mess, according to Raymond Moore. Um, ooh, I don't know what I'm doing now. Let's get to that. Sorry about that, guys. Um, just this, I've, I've, I've got, going back to using a PC and it just sucks. It really, really does suck. But anyway, on to play rating. I give him a 4.5. I'll quickly have to speed through this. Fred, um, Fred, I'll give a five. Um, I think that, um, again, the same thing showed a lot of passion. Um, but passing wasn't great today. Midfield was a bit. Older. I don't think him and Br him and Bruno really connected well. And I just think that that's just because you know um, the midfield that that worked before the, the we closed the season was Matic. And I'll come to Matic in a later segment. But Matic, Fred, and Bruno because Matic just held Fred and and we can't Fred and McTominay to the same player. It, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. Um, I would I would drop Fred and McTominay for the next game and play Matic and Pogba and, and like I said we'll get we'll get onto that we'll get onto that. Um, Illinois says we don't have wingers. Um, Bruno Bruno I'll give a Bruno I'll give a seven and a half. Um, before Pogba came on he was our best player. 
Um, he was trying to create things, he was trying to do everything. And, and, to, and that, you could argue that's almost the weakness of Bruno is that he was trying to do too much. He was trying to do too much. Um, and had he not been trying to do too much, I know. So there was some lack of composure sometimes, I think, as well. I do think that um, there are times when you're like, Bruno, why are you shooting from out that, that far out? And they're like three or four sides when he just was just shooting from, you know, 70, 80 yards. And you're like, just pass it. Just make a simple pass, you know, just do that. Don't just sort of be speculative, you know. So there was a bit of that. Um, you know, it wasn't a great game by his standards, I think, but compared to a lot of the other United players, I still think he held his own. So he gets a 7.5 to me. Um, Daniel James, um, Daniel James gets a four. Um, Daniel James was bad. <laughs> Daniel James was so, so bad. And again, rustiness, it could be rustiness. Um, it really could be. Um, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, um, Ilya says Fred five. I agree. Yeah, Bruno seven. And get and for everyone who's watching, please get your your match, um, your your score predictions in. Definitely get them in. Um, but Daniel James was bad, um, and I'm I was a bit surprised because obviously he's younger, so I thought that maybe he should be, you know, getting into it. But nah, he wasn't. He wasn't good. He wasn't. He wasn't good. Um, and hopefully he will improve. But it's evidence that he's not a first choice to right. Like, he's not a natural right winger anyway. He's a left winger. And he's not our starting right winger, you know. And to be honest, when Greenwood came on, um, we he, we were a lot better, you know. Um, so, four for me for Daniel James. Um, you know, he running. But, you know, the thing is, the running thing of Daniel James only works if, you, if you've got space to run into. Um, and the thing about Josie's team is that they, they suffocate that space. So this wasn't the right game for Daniel James, um, and that's on the manager. He should know that. He shouldn't be playing into Mourinho's hands. He should know that you've got to play, play placing a long block, and Daniel James can't do that. So you have to bring in creative players like a Pogba, a Matic, even to a certain extent a Greenwood, to try and break these teams down. That's what you need to do. And Daniel James was just running and not much else because he couldn't really get through for obvious reasons. Um, so he's a four. Marcus Rashford. Um, Rashford, I'll give a six. Um, again, could have been better. He did have, I think, two good chances that were like he should have really put away. Um, did help to defend well, but um, you know, mostly, most I won't say mostly quiet, but um, whatever formation Oli was playing, it just didn't seem to work. Um, at some point, I was thinking that he was playing four four two. You know, um, they were interchanging between, you know, so is is, is Rashford now? I, d I don't know. Like, the interchanging thing, I guess, can work. But I think you still need to have people that have got designated roles. And looking at the front line a lot of the time, I didn't, I wasn't sure what the designator of each player was. You know, who's in the no number line? Who's going to be in the box? Oh, you know, you, 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 not me. I it, it was just a bit disjointed, really, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, not the worst player, like I said, but, um, you know, there just seems to be a bit of communication between the fun players to who's doing what, in my opinion. Um, Martial, Martial, I think, I'll say Martial five and a half. Um, I think that a lot, there's been a, there's a lot, been a lot of criticism directed towards Anthony Martial, which I think is unjust. I think he had two very good chances um, against Lugo Luis and Lugo has made two very good saves. The second one in the second half was better. Um, so if he puts those away, we're not having this conversation. Um, because, and they would have been very good finishes. But he doesn't. And you have to pick your stuff up and try again. Um, but the reality is that I don't think that he was the worst player in the pitch. And the fact that, like, you know, you have a lot, I have a lot of, like, you know, non-United fans and possibly some United fans basically saying, going on Martial, he's trash, he's this, he's this, he's this, whatever. And this is addressing Don Son's um, point, I think. Um, the fact you have so many of them doing that, and yet Harry Kane was completely and totally absent in this game. I don't even know. I mean, let, if someone let me in the comments, comments, did Harry Kane even have a shot on Manchester United's goal? Because I don't think he did. You know, and you're just and you're kind of. But Kane's amazing. Kane's awesome. He was absent from that entire game, completely absent. Um, Ilya, next game needs to be on the start. I'm going to get to Greenwood. Yeah, the Brighton 2-1 thing. I mean, 
this is one of the reasons why I also believe in a bit better, um, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm complaining about um, a draw to Spurs, even though I know we have the squad to win and we could have won that. And Arsenal are, are losing to Brighton, um, Ho Hove Albion. Um, and have compacted injuries, you know, and no, no one wants to be injured. I, 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 this is the thing that, this is the thing about Ilio is that like, I, I don't even feel, um, I actually feel uh, pity, pity. That's, 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 that's what, that's what I feel. I feel, I feel pity really with Arsenal Football Club. Um, okay. Ooh, so that's Marshall. So that's, so those are the, so those are the player ratings for um, uh, the, the game. Now, the big thing actually for me from this conversation is actually who didn't play because you can clearly see that the players who didn't play really need to play. And the first person on this is poor Pogba. Poor Pogba needs to play. He needs to start. When poor Pogba came on that corner, for everyone who said Pogba and Ilya, I know you said that poor Pogba should, should go. I know you did. <laughs> you can't hide behind his comments. I've got them. You know, but you even you must admit that Pogba, okay, needs we, he needs to start, he needs to play, and we need to be building a team. This is this is the thing. This is what Pogba was promised at the start of this whole thing was that Pogba was promised that a team would be built around him. That's what he was promised. That's all. That's what the Pogba was promised. He was promised that a team would be built around him, um, and it wasn't. And 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 just look. But the things with Bruno, possibly a Sancho, we can start to build a team around him. If we can keep him, we've got a shot. If we lose Pogba, then we need to sign because there are not many midfielders in the world that are like Pogba who can ping a pass. That pass to Marcus Rashford was world class. World class. World class. And then if you watch the, the way they got the penalty, he completely destroys Eric Dyer. He sends him back, he, he sends him back to China. All the way to China. I know he's not from China, but he sends him to China. That's that's what he does. You see, he comes in one, two, boop, 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 oh, oh, floor, oh, then die, you know, trying to recover, fouls him in the box, gives away the penalty. That is that is the poor Pogba that we need. And what we saw, what was evident in this game, is that you can play for everyone who's saying, oh, you can't play Pogba and Bruno, it's not going to work, it's going to work. Like, you can play Pogba and Bruno together, just do it. Just play Pogba and Bruno together. That's it. You know, it works. Good players make decisions. At one point, Pogba was playing on the right wing. He was coming on. He was like, good players play well together. Simple as that. And we get a point from that game or possibly win that game because of this guy, because of poor Pogba. That's the fact. That's the fact. But I will make some honourable mentions. Um... Kane, uh, Ilina says Kane was dead against United. I mean, he was. Um, he was. Um, you know, two losses in the row for Arsenal. Teta's looking no, no more friendly. I mean, you know, the rat is that, um, you know, I, like I said, I don't even, I don't even call Arsenal Bantam FC anymore. It's PDFC. They're a mid-table team now. You know, they're a mid-table team. You know, we're at least trying to consider top top, top four. We've got a Europa League and they're a mid-table team. You know, mid-table. People were well bantering me last night that United got a point away from home against Spurs. And you have Arsenal can't even beat Brighton away. You know, OK, we've beaten them already this season. They've lost to them both. OK. Um, Dan San, um, Pogba for me is a nice player to trade. He's not happy we can make Pogba to ball. Imagine Bruno Fernandes can... I, you know... I don't know, mate. No, I just, I just, I think, I, I actually think Dybala is actually grossly overrated. I, I don't rate Dybala at all. Um, you know, he's okay. Um, he, he's certainly a different player to Pogba. Pogba is like a, a um, almost like creative, you know, he's not a cam. He's not, he's not like a Bruno. Bruno is, Bruno is a cam. Pogba is like a sort of a creative box-to-box -box kind of, you know, midfielder in terms of he can play deep, he can carry the ball, he can take players on, you can't get the ball off him, and he can make ping passes. You know, he is almost like a complete midfielder, you know, like... A, he's, he's, we, we, we need to keep him, in my opinion. Yes, I know he has off games, but for me, we need to keep him. We need to keep him because um, there are not many players in the world 
that 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 play like that point and we lose him you're not going to be able to just bring in a midfielder that does that you're not and we will notice it we saw that in the game we saw it in the game we saw it in the game um just a thing uh tbf shout out to you man hope you're doing well thank you for joining the stream and head out to, to uh check out his channel by the way guys um raymond moore says uh i'll just say it. pogba has so much composure in keeping ball exactly we don't have many ball playing players at manchester united um let alone players that can create um so for me we, we need to keep pogba we need to keep pogba um mid-table team <laughs> i read it was three about to see going in champ it's pity like i said it's pity for us it's pity it's pity it's pity it's pity um so just a few honorable mentions to players greenwood when greenwood came on greenwood looked good <laughs> that goal that 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 last chance that he had i was like oh man if only he'd scored that goal but mate mason greenwood for me needs to start with daniel james I'm not saying that Daniel James is terrible, but Greenwood, even though he's 17, has more footballing intelligence than Daniel James. I'm not saying he's going to score goals, but at least a standing in right winger, play Mason Greenwood. Marsh you know, Rashford, Marshall's number nine. Tell him to stay at number nine. If he doesn't, Egalo comes in. We'll get to that later. But Greenwood has to start on the right. You've got to play Mason Greenwood now because, you know, Greenwood was just poof. Especially against Sheffield, we've got to play. We've got to play Greenwood, you know. So he, he I think he did well when he came off the bench. Um, Matic is interesting. Matic came on, and I said in my previous, I wanted Matic to start because the thing that people don't get about Matic is that, and what suffered in this midfield is that while Matic is static, he can pass the ball. He has composure on the ball. So, yes, he can't run back. Fine. But he has composure on the ball. He can pass the ball. He can also make a mean yard strike as well. But he has composure on the ball. And that's what we needed. There was many times, in the, in the, especially when we conceded towards that first half, where like we were just passing here, there, everywhere. It was awful. It was atrocious. And as soon as Pogramatic come on, suddenly... We have ball-playing players that can pass the ball. It, the, the midfield, there was a bit of control because he was able to pass the ball properly and get players. To, so, for me, I know he's probably not fit, but for me, you start Matic. And then playing for, play him for 40, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever. You, you know, the, the, thing, the thing is, the thing is that I noticed, the things I noticed, right, is that there's no, when people talk about fitness, there's no reason why we can't play these players because we have drinks breaks. So really, you're playing like we have like what five, ten minutes, I think five minutes, I think drinks breaks. So there's no reason why you can't play Matic from the get-go when we've got we've got um when we get drinks breaks, when they have pauses. You have a pause in the game, then you have half time. Then you have uh, then you have another pause. And you have half time, and they don't have to play sixty minutes. So for me, match match just start. Match just start. Um, just reacted to De Gea conceding against Tottenham in the, in the combination of worst get goal give saves. Low De Gea has been in, in in many dude, and yeah, I was laughing. I, it just, I mean, it it's it is what it is. Um, I think question marks need to be made over De Gea. In, in, in my in my opinion, I agree. Um, TB of Daniel James uh, tends to operate more wide and makes forty one more efficient. But Greenwood tends um, to move centrally, and that's when the dynamic or the game changed when it was 4 3 3. I mean, the thing is, is that, like, I, and I said this earlier in the stream, is that Daniel James is fine. So it, would be, it, was, it works great against City when there's space for us to run into, or potentially against Liverpool, when there's space for us to run into, Daniel James is fine, you know. But when there's no space to run into, and when you've got playing against a team with a low block, it's pointless. And he didn't have any space to run into the player while he didn't, you know. So, um, and then Raymond Moore, um, Mason Greenwood can win area battle and hold the ball better than little Daniel James. He's faster, James. And I agree. I agree with that. I agree. Um, just a few honorable mentions. Igala, when he came on, didn't seem to do that particularly much. But for me, um, again, Igala was a number nine. Martial, is Martial number nine? I'm not sure. Because when Igala came on, once again, there was someone in the box, you know, 
for most parts of the half, it was like there was even when Wan Bissaka and Duke Shaw were trying to give in shots, you need to put someone in the box, you need to put someone in the box, you need to put someone. In. So Agallo either comes on earlier or he starts. You know, for me, the big problem with Ansi Martial and Rashford is that they aren't physical enough. So against Sheffield United, so for me, for example, against Sheffield United, I'm going to be controversial. I would start Agallo because Agallo will back up to defend it. So he'll back up, he'll back up, he'll back up, he'll be rough, he'll be physical. You know, that's what we need against low block teams. You know, you don't need, pretty football is fine when you're playing, when you're playing quick counter-attack. When you're playing against low block teams that are going to be compact, you need physical players. That's why Costa was a beast for Chelsea because he was like, screw you. And he could finish. You know, we need a Garlo in these games, you know, and I want him to see the play to seem to start honestly against Sheffield United because we need we need that that oomph. We need that kind of right, okay. And that can and then because and one thing that is great about Garlo is that he brings players in with him. So he'll hold up the ball, he'll back into defenders, and then and by holding that ball up, by holding away, because we didn't have anyone that held up the ball today, really. Uh, we didn't. Agallo will hold up the ball, he'll hold it up, and he'll wait for those players to come in, and then boom, you know, it's as it's, it's simple as that. Um, and then lastly, just Eric Bay. Um, drop either Lindelof or Maguire and put Eric Bay next to one of them. Please, please do that so shot. Sure. I know he's potentially injury prone, but if Bay plays in that game, we don't concede that goal. Simple as. Because he has the recovery pace to, to, to not as concede it. Simple as that.